Shabbat Shalom. This week's parsha, parsha Naso, we have the rules concerning the Nazarite, the Nazir, person who takes a, a set of vows, ascetic vows to refrain from drinking wine. Uh, and uh, there are many contradictions involved in this institution, uh, beginning with uh, certain uh, details, most important and, and outstanding are concerning the hair of the Nazarite. As part of his vow, he he takes a, a vow not to cut it during the period of his of, of, uh, of which he will be a Nazarite, which is uh, conventionally 30 days unless specified otherwise. But in the ritual which 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 is performed the temple at the end of the vow, when he's successfully completed his, his whatever amount of time that he has taken upon himself to be a Nazarite, he is completely shaven. And the contradiction goes all the way through to the actual way of, of uh, attitude towards the institution. He's called uh, at the same time Kadosh, holy, and there are places in, in the Bible and in, in, in the writings of the Jewish sages where he's, these people are considered uh, holy people, people who were who've gone beyond the, the what's uh, requested or demanded of ordinary citizens. But he's also considered a sinner and as part of the purification ritual, uh, the Nazarite has to bring a guilt offering, a korban Hashem. We will take a closer look at this by looking at two concrete cases of, of Nazarites and their hair. The hair, again, is the outstanding symbol. In fact, the the Nazarite itself, some think, take his name takes its name from the Hebrew Nazar, which means crown. And in the case of the Nazarite, refers to the, his crown of hair. And again, we will see uh, how their these, these, these contradictions play out and what, what lessons we can learn from them. So the first case we will look at is the Prince of Israel, the son of King David, Absalom, uh, who uh, our sages say was a Nazarite, a special kind of Nazarite, a kind who was a uh, Nazarite from birth. Uh, and uh, though the the uh, the uh, Bible doesn't say explicitly that he was a Nazarite, there are indications in, in the way he's described uh, that, he, that he was a Nazarite. For example, it says that he had, he would uh, have his hair trimmed once every 12 months because someone who was a lifelong Nazarite, who was maybe even been consecrated as a Nazarite by, by his parents or by, by someone else before he was born, uh, is allowed to trim their hair once a year. Now, Absalom is also described by the Bible as being an extraordinarily handsome, the most handsome uh, youth in Israel. And uh, according to a, a ancient uh, Jewish legend, he actually had the hair of Adam, the first human. Adam uh, was sort of like the perfect perfect body, the perfect specimen, but the different different people in the course of history uh, were inherited, they were graced with parts of his body, with, and he had the hair of Adam, so he had extraordinarily beautiful hair. And as we know from the story of Absalom, when he uh, uh, rebelled against his father, and he, he was eventually, his rebellion was crushed by David and his a uh, very violent, bloodthirsty general, Yoav. Uh, then uh, Absalom fled from the battlefield, but his hair got caught in a tree uh, and he was left there helplessly dangling and Yoav murdered him. So his hair was his undoing, certainly at the end, but possibly at the, at the beginning as well. It's possible that being so handsome and having him in particular beautiful head of hair uh, may have gotten to his head too much and led him to to want to you know rebel and displace his father and eventually was his undoing now the second story comes from the Talmud and it describes the practices of a one of the uh, priests high priest Shimon Atzadik, uh, the man uh, on whose name 
uh, the Jewish the Jewish name for the uh, neighborhood in Jerusalem, which is now uh, very much uh, in the headlines, uh, is taken because we, the, the tradition has it that, that his tomb is located there. Anyway, he was a high priest, and he did not like the institution of Nazareth. Uh, throughout the course of Jewish history, there's been a resistance to, to, to this idea of people taking these ascetic vows. And so when the people, the Nazareth, and there were hundreds of them in his day, would come and bring their guilt offerings, which would then be consumed, the meat would be eaten by the priests, he passed. Uh, he, he sat it out. He didn't want to take, partake of the, of, of the flesh of those animals, except once. The one time that he agreed to eat from the offering of a Nazarite was when he saw this extremely good-looking young man come in, and he said, why, why did you, you know, take on these, these vows, these vows which meant that you would, you know, let your hair grow wild for a certain period of time, and then completely, you know, shave your head and shave, shave your whole body. And he said that he was uh, walking along one day and stopped to take a drink from a, a fountain, and he saw his reflection, and he saw how handsome he was, and he said, you know, I, someone like me who's, who's so handsome and attractive is going to get in trouble someday. Some young woman, uh, maybe some young man, will, you know, will, will uh, want to entice me into something because I'm, because I'm so good looking. So I will take these vows to be a Nazarite, not so much for the period in which I let my hair grow, but because at the end of the purification ritual, I will have to shave my entire head and I will not be that attractive and there'll be less chance of, you know, getting in, in trouble. And when he heard that, you know, he kissed them and blessed them and said, I, I will, I will consume it. I'll, I'll, I'll have a piece of your, of your, of your uh, Corbin, of your offering. So again, we have here these contradictions, these sort of polar opposites uh, with regard to the institution of the, of the Nazarite and with regard to these particular cases. In the one case, Absalom, where these, these long, uh, luscious locks uh, seems to have uh, fed his pride and led to his undoing. And we have this young man from the south uh, who, who found that the, the institution of, of the Nazarite would save him from getting involved in, in, in any uh, illicit and uh, immoral activity. Uh, now, what are we to make of this? Well, in my mind, it just brings us back to the same simple uh, point that has to be driven home over and over again. Free choice, the freedom of choice, the freedom of the will, uh, how we want to you know, label it, that's considered the fundamental in Judaism, is something that carries with its responsibility. It's up to us. This institution, our hair, our physical appearance, uh, the, 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 the things we take, the obligations we take upon ourselves, uh, affect our lives. And it's up to us. We have got to choose which direction to take. And Absalom took the wrong direction, and his youth from the, from the south took the right direction. So again, these stories with all their philosophical uh, underpinnings and, and all the deep meanings and mystical meanings that one can find uh, bring us back again and again to the same point. Choose life, choose the good, do the good, and avoid the bad. Aseto Suomera Vaseto. Thank you very much and Shabbat Shalom.